Hi, Stephen here from Faded Crossings. You know, the biggest controversy facing astrologers today is whether to use Placidus houses or whole sign houses. It's almost an embarrassment to astrology. It's one of the reasons why mainstream society might not take us seriously, because we cannot come together and agree on what the proper house system is. So I would like to propose two methods for dealing with this problem, and both of these methods find the same solution, which is to integrate both house systems. It's my opinion that a true astrology ninja finds a way to use them both, instead of preferring one to the other. Take a look. The first way to handle the Placidus versus whole signs controversy is to simply use them both at the same time. You would be amazed at how often this technique works, and one of the virtues of it is that it expands your options for interpreting houses. Let's examine this native's Venus in Virgo. She is in the 10th house, which has to do with profession, but she's in the 9th Placidus house. You see that? Venus is in the 10th whole sign, but also in the 9th Placidus house. So the first method would deal with integrating both of these testimonies. So as for the native's profession, it is very analytical and detail oriented, Virgo, and it has to do with purification, Venus. But at the same time, this native absolutely loves to travel. She loves exploring foreign places, alien places, faraway places. She loves spirituality, mysticism, uh, astrology, and these are all symptoms of a ninth house genre. So both of these house testimonies apply to this individual. And in fact, she has actually traveled to foreign lands to practice her profession. So we could apply the same technique to her Saturn in Libra, conjoined with Pluto. It's in the 11th whole sign and is thereby saying something about her friends, namely that they are Saturnian. And that has so far been the case. Many of her friends uh, are laboring under bodily illnesses, Saturn, and many of them uh, come from rich families. Saturn is, after all, exalted in Libra. And some of them have suffered from depression, have passed away prematurely. And uh, this is also, this negativity is also a trait of Saturn, specifically the Saturn-Pluto conjunction. But it's also in the 10th Placidus house. And like Venus, is also saying something about her career in terms of the materials that she works with. She works with Saturnian materials. And her job actually has a transformative, purgative effect on the people that she works with. And again, she works with people because Libra is a human sign pertaining to people. So you see, that wasn't too difficult. More often than you might realize, you can expand your, your assessments, your chart readings, and make them more accurate simply by integrating the testimonies of both house systems, Placidus and whole signs at the same time. But there's another way of dealing with the controversy. And this is the second method. You can use whole signs for topics while simultaneously judging planetary strength using the Placidus house system. And this method requires you to know that the angular and succeedant houses are quantitatively stronger than the cadent houses. So planets in the angles, houses one, four, seven, and 10, and planets in the succeedant houses, houses two, five, eight, and 11, these planets are moving forward. They're very visible, very perceptible. They're very involved in the themes of the native's life as shown by the chart. And they give us a way to kind of say how much volume is attached to this planet. How loud is it? How present is it? Whereas the Cadent planets in houses 3, 6, 9, and 12 are sort of retreating from the life. They are abstracted into the mind. They are less present, less visible. The astrologer Demetra George uh, 
has a very cute and amusing analogy. She says she likens the Cadent Planets to a bright and dazzling storefront that is 10 miles outside of the city limits and down a dusty dirt road. So the planet might be promising something really wonderful, but it is so far removed from the person's life that maybe 25% of the time it manifests. So to recap, we can use whole signs for topics and placidus to see how visible, how immediate, how present, and how involved the planet is in dealing or interacting or affecting the person who owns the chart. Take In order to illustrate this second method of solving the Placidus versus whole signs controversy, we will use the chart of this male and specifically looking at his Saturn. Now recall the angular and succeedant houses. The angular houses are 1, 4, 7, and 10, and the succeedant houses are 2, 5, 8, and 11. Planets in these houses, in these Placidus houses, are going to be very uh, immediate, very present, very involved in the native's life, and they are advancing their agendas aggressively. Whereas planets in the Cadent houses, 3, 6, 9, and 12, are more abstracted into the mind. They are retreating from visible presence in the life. So with that in mind, let's examine Saturn. And recall, with the second method, we are going to use the whole sign house topic and then use the Placidus house to determine how present and how powerful and how quantitatively strong the planet is, how involved and engaged the planet is with this native. So with this method, a planet can be in a wonderful condition, but because it is cadent, then it's not necessarily all that interested in improving the person's life. But we can have a situation like this gentleman's where a planet is in a bad condition but dynamically angular in a placidus angle and it will be very involved with the native's life. So Saturn by his nature is a malefic. He is usually a troubling and difficult planet and when he is in Cancer he is promising something manifestly bad and for this individual he's promising something bad of a fifth house style, of a fifth house genre. So Saturn in Cancer is going to harm this native's pleasures because pleasures, entertainments, recreations are the fifth house. And indeed, this individual is struggling with substance abuse disorder. So Saturn's topic is pleasures, Saturnian pleasures. And because he is in the fourth place of his house, then he's going to be uh, a constant presence in this person's life. He is going to be advancing his Saturnian agenda in this individual's life very aggressively and it's going to cause all kinds of problems and in fact has caused all kinds of problems. Now bear in mind that according to method one we could still just simply synthesize these two house testimonies as well and Saturn definitely has uh, some kind of relevance to the native's fourth house. He himself, the native, is a Saturnian presence in his home. He has poor hygiene a lot of the times, uh, a bad attitude, and is just sort of a stain in the domestic environment. And also his father, fourth house, um, died when he was very young from alcohol poisoning. So both house topics are relevant. But according to the second method, we have this expanded information that the Saturn, due to his placidus angularity, is advancing and unrelenting and is going to be a constant factor in his life. Looking at his moon, we have a very powerful planet here. And again, we're going to use whole sign house topics for this second way of dealing with the Placidus whole sign controversy. So the third whole sign is Taurus. That pertains to siblings. So the moon is describing a sibling. And he, in fact, has a sister. And we can maybe guess that it's a sister because the moon is a feminine planet and she is in a feminine sign. Taurus. Now, the moon, this very powerful exalted moon, is in the second Placidus house, which is succeedant. So she is advancing. She's moving forward. She is 
indicating someone very prominent, in this case the sibling. And this native sister married very well, has a more elevated social rank relative to this native's uh, world. You know, she's not a celebrity or, you know, a high-ranking politician or anything, but in the world that this native lives in, she ranks up there. She's affluent relative to him, upper middle class, married well. And she is an esthetician, a hair person, you might say, a business oriented lady, all of which is relevant to the larger symbolism of Taurus. And we can apply this technique to all of the planets in his chart, and you can apply it to any chart that you're currently studying. For example, look at his Pluto. It's in the eighth whole sign, having to do with shared assets, but it's in the seventh Placidus house. Very, very powerful, very strong, and very um, perceptible. And indeed, this native is engaged in power struggles with his ex-spouse over their shared assets. So there you have it. A workable way to resolve the Placidus versus whole sign controversy. The less elegant approach is to adopt an either-or mindset. I have to use one or the other. And astrology works best when it's flexible and fluid, when the uh, analyst can adapt her or his thinking to the chart at hand. And so the best method is simply to integrate both house systems. Uh, the better astrologers tend to do this, and you will get great results if you do the same. So to recap, you can simply synthesize both house testimonies and blend the whole sign and Placidus house meanings. Or you could use a more sophisticated and complex method where you use whole sign house topics and Placidus houses to gauge planetary strength and immediacy and presence. And of course, you can use both methods as well. The best thing to do is to keep an open mind and to be flexible as you judge uh, charts. So apply this to your practice charts and let me know in the comments how everything worked out for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you would like to book a reading, please feel free to reach out to me at stephen at fadedcrossings.com.